Hello and welcome to Taking the Mic, and this is episode one. Um, just catching up with Jamie Ellis from the band Sunhouse. So here is episode one. Hope you guys enjoy. Right, just for like everyone that's listening, I should probably explain. Uh, you're in a coffee shop at the moment, too. I am, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm currently working on a cruise ship, playing a guitar on a cruise ship. So I've, uh, I found a nice little coffee shop to uh, take shelter in and grab some Wi-Fi <laughs> so we can have a chat. Wow. Amazing. Well, wow. um, just as glamorous on my end, I'm sitting in my car outside my house. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's showbiz. <laughs> Rock and roll. Um, <laughs> right. Well, I just want to get um, straight into it with you, Jamie. Uh, now, your band members, obviously, you play guitar. You've got yep. uh, Cam Meek on the drums. Mm-hmm. Now, originally, you had Emilia Quinn as your lead singer. Yeah. She's not with you anymore. What's, what's happened to I mean, so we all met. At uni, so you know, we were all sort of like really tight friends for a long time, and that's how the band formed and things. Um, mm. and then as uni sort of started to come to a close, you know, we started looking at other directions. And so, me and Cam are full time full time musicians, you know, when we're not working with Sunhouse, we're off, you know, like now I'm on a cruise ship and we're off doing theater shows and session work and all this other kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and uh, sort of, so we were doing that route, and musically, Amelia wanted to go down other routes and things. and she just decided to go do something else, you know. So she's doing her own, uh, got her own sort of country. Thing going now, her own so, Great. Um, so, yeah, sort of different oh, musical directions, I suppose. So That's good. Because I know you, you guys, you had a single in 2017, was it Leave Me For Dead? Yeah. And then you yeah. had your EP, Rosedale, yeah. in 2019 as well, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. So we did... Um, yeah, Leave Me For Dead, and then Rosedale. Emmy left just before Rosedale was released, actually. Um, so, so, yeah, she, she left, um, so I had to call it quits, and we were sat with this EP, and me and Cam were sort of thinking, oh, okay, great, what do we what, what do we do now? Um, so we decided to go, go ahead, you know, move forward. We'll, we'll sort it out. We released the EP, which was fantastic, and it was good fun. We thought we'd done it. Yeah, we got to get it out there. Um, Brilliant. And then, yeah, sort of just we kept the ball rolling from there, really. Great stuff. Now I know it's on this album, uh, "Ticket to Fly." You had Thomas. Is it Baptista? Baptista, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now I gotta say, right, that guy's vocals. I got some serious like Led Zeppelin vibes from him when I was listening to the album. Yeah. Uh, he's got such a brilliant range. Fair play to him. But I'm just wondering, like, you know, how do you manage you know, as a band with your sort of lead singer? I mean, you sort of you've asked him to sing for this album. Is he a sort of would you have him as like a full-time member or would you more prefer to like sort of have different singers with each album? So, I mean, yeah, this would be a bit of a, we've, we've not publicly told what's going on actually. This would be the first thing. So Tom, that was the original plan to have a different singer on each album. Sunhouse was going to be, after Emmy left, Sunhouse was going to be me and Cam uh, and we were going to have different singers on um, and kind of go from there, which is a little bit unconventional. Um, and we weren't sure how that was going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, how that was going to land, you know. Mm. Um, so I then met Tom, funny enough, at a Led Zeppelin tribute show. So as I said, you know, do, um, I do a lot of other stuff outside of Sunhouse. And I got called in to go play guitar, to go be um, Jimmy Page at this, this Zeppelin tribute show. And Tom was there as a singer. So I went to go do this show, met Tom, started hanging out. And it was, oh, just during lockdown and things, you know, I started having these ideas for a new album. And it's, oh, let's call Tom. Tom's great. You know, Tom would be this, the featuring singer on this album. Yeah. Um, and it went so well. We got on so well, and it just worked. Um, did we then after the album, which we, we've not told anybody yet? After the album, we were like, "Oh, Tom, I'll come on and do album two. We'll do a second one, and just sort of stay on as a member." And he said, "Yeah." So Tom is our new, our new singer, I suppose. Yeah, which which is great. It's good oh, fun. It's nice man. to have that solid lineup again. You know. Brilliant. We are great. Um, I was going to ask as well with the actual. Um, I, I've listened to your Ticket to Fly album quite, quite a few times. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering, what was the, um, what was your sort of a creative process for it with coming up, you know, when we came to um, actually like writing the tracks? Yeah, so I mean, this one was, whereas before I said like Rosedale, it, it happened from just us being in the rehearsal room, you know, messing around, 
we're getting ready for a show and a new idea will pop into our head and we're just, you know, twiddling about and something comes out and someone goes, oh, wait, let's run with that for a second. And then a song will come out of it. Um, Ticket to Fly was a bit different. So I wrote Ticket to Fly in lockdown, in the first lockdown. It was great. You know, everything shut down. We weren't touring anymore. Me and Cam weren't off touring with other projects either. And I just hadn't had all this time, as so did many other artists, you know. Yeah. And uh, and it was suddenly like, oh, great. I've got all these these ideas. I've got these riffs and and little bits. Yeah, didn't know what to do with them. And me and Cam would send emails back and forth and develop these ideas and until we sort of fleshed them out into sort of full structures. And then those went on to Tom and got emailed. It was one of those sort of albums that weirdly didn't get written in the same room. You know, it was written over email, popping stuff yeah. back and forth, recorded bits, try this, how does this work? No, I'm not, like, not sure, I changed that and, and what have you. And then it was only until we were like, okay, we're happy with sort of how this sounds. Let's get together in a room and let's try try these live. You know, let's, let's try and work these out. What doesn't work? Made a few little final changes and edits there and in the room together. Because, I mean, you know, writing online was great and send the emails back and forth. And I think it's forced us to write differently. Yeah. Um, I think especially when we're jamming, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, this works. Oh, great. Yeah, great song. And I suppose it's sort of what, what happens, happens. Whereas when we're emailing things back and forth, we've got that time to sort of craft things a little bit more, develop things. Yeah. So I, th- I personally think the songwriting on Tick Reply is a little bit stronger, just where we've had that time to, to craft it more. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, there's, um, we met live but to put that energy back into it because you're writing online yeah so there's no there's no band energy there's no real strong like yeah this is a rock band and then when we got yeah. together that kind of just clicked straight away so we clicked and then jumped in a, in a studio and, and tracked it all live like a proper proper rock band shit you know brilliant that's great that is i um thing is that's the thing though with obviously because of covid and stuff doing things via email or online now i suppose like that's the thing a lot of bands are doing now um but it sounds like you found a way to make it work. As you say, it's not quite the same as meeting face-to-face, but then obviously when you came to recording, you sort of got that vibe back and you could actually create an album. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all, it's, you've got to be able to adapt, especially with, you know, like you said, with COVID and everything, everyone's had to, to learn to adapt and do things differently. Yeah. Um, very, very lucky that we've got that technology, I suppose, just to be able to bounce ideas back and forth. Can you imagine doing this back in the eighties? You know, send, <laughs> sending mixtapes to each other by the post. Oh my god! Lost. <laughs> very, very grateful of emails and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, but yeah, I think no matter what, we always decided, no matter what comes out of it, we have to get in the same room together and record it live. It's Brilliant. yeah, it, 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 like old Zeppat albums, ACDC albums and stuff. There needs to be that energy there that that connection, that all that stuff that goes on, it's not even musical, you know what I mean? When you're in the same room with another person, you're vibing and you're jamming and, and you're playing the tunes, there's something else that goes on that yeah. you can't put a finger on, but then it gets captured in that recording, something magical, you know? So we, we wanted that to still be there. Brilliant. Um, now, I'm going to kind of uh, take you back a little bit now. I was just wondering, uh, how old were you when you first started to play guitar? Uh, I would say about 10. 10? About 10, yeah. So I I, wanted to, I always had an interest in music. Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad's a big big rock fan, so I'd listen to all of his albums and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, as a kid, yeah, he used to fantasize, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in a rock band when I'm older, you know. Um, I, yeah, it was just, I, my aunt had a free guitar, had a guitar, so she let me borrow that, just a little acoustic classical thing. Yeah. And then there was some free lessons offered at my, my school at the time. Just, literally just pure luck. It was just, oh, here's a guitar. And then, oh, free lessons pop up at the school. Great. You know, like everything aligned. It's meant uh, to be then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess so, you know. And it just spawned from there and just kept kept working at it. So so with that, then, obviously, like you say, you got given a guitar. You had the lessons and stuff. But, like, when was there, like, was there a point when you were, like, learning was it like a sort of a turning point for you where you thought like yeah i really want to do this like full time i think i think i've always wanted to do it full time but there's mm-hmm. that because none of no one in my family is in the entertainment industry or musicians anything like that i'm the first in the family so right. it was that kind of my only knowledge of music was you, you're in a band and, and you, you make it that way you know there wasn't that knowledge of even the stuff I do now, you're playing in a theater or working on a cruise ship or, or studio work, all that kind of stuff. It didn't even come to my mind. 
So it was just, oh, you've been a band, you do it. And it was just, oh, I, just, I remember the chat. I was on, on, on my way to a guitar lesson with my mum in the car. And it was just, oh, I'm going to do music full time. And I don't know how it will work. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills or have a mortgage or buy a house or any of that sort of stuff. But I'm going to make it work. And it was just that gut feeling that it was like, somehow it will work. And yeah. I've been very fortunate that it has. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. Now, you, I, I feel like in some ways you're sort of like, you're, you're living the dream in some ways. Because, I mean, I, I, I started playing guitar when I was like 18, uh, pretty much like self-taught. Um, and to be honest with you, for me, like I do like a couple of open mics, but that's sort of as far as it goes for me. Um, so the fact like, you know, like we've chatted over the last couple of weeks now and I found out, you know, you're playing music on a ship as a job. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, it's, what is this like? It's pretty insane. It's it's one of those things that, like, when you're in the moment, you get wrapped up in it, and it's just like, oh, this is just my day. And it's only, <laughs> it's only when you finish the job, or when you then speak to someone that doesn't do this, that you then realise actually this is pretty mental. Yeah. You, you know, it was only the other, when was it we were speaking, and I can't even remember. What, it was, it's it's going to sound a bit braggy. It's not tended to be but it's like I'm, I'm waking up every day in a different country on this ship which is incredibly lucky i'm incredibly lucky for that to happen and yeah. at the moment i'm in that little bubble of like okay this is my job this is normal but i've literally only just got off the phone to my mum just uh just checking in she wanted to make sure we were okay on the boat yeah and uh yeah it's just that real realization that like this isn't normal this is this isn't everybody's day to day you know it's i'm very very fortunate very lucky yeah, it is fun. It's yeah, it's a lot of hard work. Don't get me wrong, everything's a lot of hard work. Yeah, you know, in, in any line of work, but this is yeah. Who gets to very lucky to travel the world and do what I do? You know. Well, this is what I was going to ask you next. Actually, obviously, you know, you you're based in the UK and stuff like that, and as you say, you you know, you're on ships and you're traveling the world. But obviously, because you play that sort of blues rock kind of music, um, was it sort of difficult for you to get like established in other countries, like particularly in like the US, you know, where that's, you know, in places like Nashville and stuff like that, where like blues rock is, is so huge. Like, was it hard for you to sort of make that break into America? I mean, I wouldn't say we've broke America yet. There's still a long way to go. Um, in, in all countries, there's a long way to go. You know, we're still very, I'd say we're very early in our, yeah, where we can, where we can be in, in Sun House's lifespan. But I mean, it was, we've been very fortunate in that sense as well. That it, it was never an intentional, we're going to try and break this country or we're going to try and get known here. You know, we put the EPA Rosedale and we only had a small little UK following. Yeah. And we were just very lucky that it got picked up by some people in America in Germany, Europe and all these kind of places. And they just loved it. And they just shared the hell out of it. It went absolutely everywhere, which is great. And then magazines picked it up and it just from that, that word of mouth was then what allowed it to, to sort of naturally snowball. So yeah. we, we never went, great, we're going to target this country. <laughs> which which is it's very lucky. You know, it's kind of crazy when you, you talk about it, I suppose. Um, yeah. Cause that, are you guys with the label? Sorry. Yeah. We're not. No, we do everything ourselves. We're totally independent. Wow. Which, uh, as things grow, you know, we'll, we're likely at some point need that extra help. And we're currently sort of thinking about management and things at the moment, just because at the moment it's, it, it's a lot on, our shoulders at the moment, especially with then us touring and doing other projects and things as well. So even like I, that, I found a coffee shop to fit <laughs> <to laughs> you in on the tour. You know, it's a lot of a lot of slotting bits in and here and there, but yeah, everything's done on our own. This is a good learning quite, curve. Yeah, I'm I'm quite surprised at it. Only because like I was trying to do some like research, uh, you know, for your back and now you've got information on Spotify about, you know, your lineup for your band and stuff. And I was like, they must be a part of a label. They've got to be. And I, and I was like, and I, so I wasn't actually sure enough. But the fact that you've, you're effectively sort of doing this like on your own, that's that's huge, man. I mean, thank you, man. It's yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's not been easy. <laughs> it is. It's never easy. It's always an uphill battle. Um, yeah. But the best things are, you know, the best things are. So now it's nice to have that, even a small achievement. You know, like when we landed our first magazine, it was like great. We've done that. You know, that was us that that locked that in. Yeah, it wasn't help from a label or anything. We did that. Yeah, and it's that nice little bit of pride that it gives us. Is it's quite satisfying, you know. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, I was going to ask, um, obviously, because you have been like touring around. Um, it's probably difficult for you to pick one, I guess. But I mean, is do you have like a favorite place that you like to play live? We love London. 
Um, and we're going back to the 100 Club in April, uh, April 26th, we're at the 100 Club supporting Eliza Nils. Um, right. I love that venue just because purely because of the history of that venue. You know, you, I don't know if you've ever been, but you go in and there's all these pictures all over the wall of everyone that's played there. There's the original Sun House that we took inspiration from. You know, there's, there's the White Stripes, there's Zeppelin, there's the Rolling Stones. You know, all of our idols have been in that venue. Yeah. I mean, so play I, there is, is something, something special, you know. I'll be honest with you, I, I could, <laughs> could talk all day to you about the White Stripes and Jack White. Uh, <laughs> he, he's someone else, that guy. He really is. He's, yeah. But, I love his, I don't know if you've seen, I think it's, it might get loud. There's a little documentary he did with Jimmy Page and The Edge. The Edge, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was in that where he goes, oh, if, if it takes me six seconds, if I've got six seconds to reach this next instrument on stage, I'm going to put it 10 seconds away from me just to make me run that bit faster. I love that. Yeah. That's, all, yeah. that, that's Jack White down to a T, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, he's got a strong work ethic. He really has. So. Um yeah, well, actually, I was about to say, yeah, I, I haven't actually been to London. I'm actually going now in, um, I think it's April or May I'll be going. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely have to, like, uh, check out some places, especially if there's, like, musical influence there. Yeah, or, yeah, there's loads of venues, especially and if you're in town in April, you know, come down to the show, man. Let's, let's, let's hang out. It'd be great. Yeah, was that 26, was it? 26th of April, yeah. We're supporting Eliza Nils. I don't know if you know Eliza, but... An American no. artist that's just dropped an album that, that went huge in the blues scene and she's doing great. So it's going to be a really good show. It should be fun. All right, cool. well, I'll have to uh, I'll have to keep an eye out. And if I'm in London at that time, yeah, I'll definitely have to have to pop along. I think. Yeah, I do. We'll hang out. That'd be great. Great. Um, mentioning influences, obviously, you mentioned now about um, the original Sun House's influence to Robert Johnson and yeah. White Stripes. Um, is there anyone, not just like those people, but is there anyone that's influenced you that you would love to play with? And if so, what song would you love to play with them? Oh, what a question. What a question. See, there's so many artists. And not even from like a blues point of view, like even take Stevie Wonder, you know, to play, play with Stevie Wonder would be incredible. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, but... um in the blues rock world I'm trying to think who I'd love to it's... Bonamassa would be great big Bonamassa fan and Robin Ford as well Robin Ford is I tell you, if we're talking dead or alive Gary Moore yeah no no David Gilmore I can't make my mind <laughs> up I can't make my mind up there's too many <laughs> too many <laughs> too many yeah one of those let's go David Gilmore there we go brilliant All right, excellent well I only have one final question for you now uh, and I think you may have already sort of covered it, but I was just going to ask, what does the future hold now for the band, for Sunhouse? We have got so much in the pipeline. It's a little bit crazy. We've got, so yeah, we've got this show coming up at the 100 Club on the 26th, which we're going to record live, and it's going to be a live album that comes out oh. off the back of that, which is very exciting. It's going to be our first live album. Um, we're currently, album two is currently being recorded. So I wrote, as soon as album one was finished, Ticket to Fly, um, I think it, it was, I had about a week turnaround. Yeah, we, were, we launched Ticket to Fly. I took a week off and then straight away I was back to the computer and it was like, oh, I've got new ideas. And album <laughs> two was, I'd written the bolt, the sort of the skeleton of album two in a week. It was like, I've got this. It was just this really great time of like throwing songs at me, you know? Yeah. So that's in the works. We've laid down a lot of the, um, part of a lot of the tracks. Tom's just working on um, his vocal parts now. Uh, so that's happening. We're also working on a little unplugged album, sort of strip things back, just do an acoustic version of, of a lot of our tunes and things. And Great. Yeah, we're hoping for a few more shows this year. It's, it's tricky with shows. Obviously, with the COVID, there's a big backlog on festivals and shows for like two years now, where people have had things booked, it's been postponed, postponed. So yeah. For us trying to book things in show-wise, it's been quite a challenge this year. And I imagine that's going to roll on for a couple of years. Um, but yeah. we grab, grab what we can and yeah we've got plenty of releases in the pipeline which is very exciting excellent great man well Jamie i got to say man it's been awesome chatting to you um, thanks, thanks for having me on you know it's been great that's no problem this is my first episode by the way so uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is like the debut episode great congratulations on the podcast this is great <laughs> <laughs> very very honoured to be the first guest this is this, that's nice thank you Thanks so much. Well, look, we'll have to have a catch up again sometime soon. Let's do it. And um, best of luck now with the tour and stuff. And Thank I hope you, you guys smart it.
Thank Thank you, mate. Best of luck with the podcast. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you, buddy. All right. Speak to you soon, Jamie. Cheers. Well, what a fun episode that was. So that was Jamie Ellis from Sunhouse. Great having a catch up with him. And best of luck to him and the band on their upcoming tour.